everybody. I'll start with Wig by Cheryl. She makes them. Hopefully, I will remember. I'm just going to put this down. Hopefully, I will remember to... Um, to put her email address below. Hi everyone, and this is Metaphysical Science. And I feel like a virgin right now. <laughs> yes, I do. I feel like a virgin right now because I haven't done this in a while except for my own purposes. So um, I feel like a virgin and I where do I begin? Well, I will begin by saying that I I decided that I will start really slow, really boring. So I asked my ancestors, please give me someone really boring, someone without a lot of secrets, someone who um just is, and they gave me Steve Harvey. They said, okay, if you want boring, Steve Harvey it is, okay? <laughs> Steve Harvey. So this reading today is on Steve Harvey and on his marriage and on his fatherhood. And my ancestors, well, I am not expecting anything amazing to happen. I'm not expecting any amazing information to come out and hit a bitch in the head. I'm not expecting that, right? I'm expecting nice and easy, okay? <laughs> But before I go into the reading, I would like to thank you all, every single one of you, for holding me down when I was going through a very traumatic period of my life. It was extremely traumatic, so traumatic that my ancestors pulled me into the veil and I was there for a while. They just like released me fully like two days ago. And they said, if I don't get back on YouTube at once, then I'm going to make excuses and never get on it, right? Because that's what I do. And so um, I am not going to talk about my veil experiences because they are long, but I haven't yet processed everything either. And I'm in the middle of battle. And all these battles that I'm having are going to be part of book two of A Light in the Cave. So I am going to write about it because I'm more articulate on paper. As much as people love to hear my voice, I'm more articulate on paper. So I will write about it in book two. And getting and while we're on A Light in the Cave, thank you so much for making A Light in the Cave number six on Amazon's best-selling list for religious books for just one day. It made me so happy. Thank you so much for purchasing this book that I had scrapped. I decided not to publish it while I was going through my dark moment. I just didn't see the need. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to be hurt and disappointed. And I didn't want to cry because I spent the first few days of um, me being off YouTube crying. Yeah, I cried. A lot so I didn't want to do that so I decided I wasn't gonna publish but my grandmothers in their wisdom in in true Bantu wisdom they reminded me of the story of the trophy wife all our stories like I've, I've told people on Instagram every story I write is spiritual whether it is sexual or not it is spiritual the Bantu do not believe in giving a Bible they don't believe in telling souls how to live and that's where they have issues with the zodiac because the zodiacs are saying there are only 12 personalities in the soul spectrum and that God only puts 12 personalities onto the world to live and to experience and the Bantus dispute that the Bantus dispute that vehemently they dispute it there are no 12 personalities that walk the face of the earth but even more there are no you cannot box people and then expect the same results because the souls are varied and they are different and they are amazing. So the Bantus have been giving out Bantu wisdom, Bantu spirituality, Bantu religion in stories. The stories start as fairy tales when you're younger. As you get older and older, they become more intense. They become sexual stories, like the side chicks rule stories. They become um, sci-fi stories. They become other types of stories. And always at school, we were always asked, 
what did you learn from this story and no answer was ever wrong no answer was ever wrong ever because you are a different soul from another you got something out of it that another person wouldn't get so a story with 10 characters based in a situation that you might go through or you have gone through right which one are you out of the 10 people which one are you so uh, my ancestors brought me back to the stories they gave me of the side chicks rule and they said to me the trophy wife that's you you've lost yourself you've lost your soul you don't know how to react and you don't know what to do you you're, you're scattered okay which is you know i truly am scattered it goes with being psychic you're scattered and you don't know your own true soul anymore and you are Janae in the trophy wife so ask yourself what would Janae do and Janae would publish no matter the consequences they also used the trophy wife to teach me about forgiveness these are my grandmothers my my, my ancestor the, the the big closer himself he he taught me something too right but that's that'll be in the book because it's deeper right but they used uh, the trophy wife Jane. I actually cried when I wrote that book. I cried from book one too because that was so me. Her reactions, what she did, so me. And I guess I knew that. That's why out of all the books my ancestors gave me, I, I cried in that one. So they used that one again to show me forgiveness, uh, to, to show me how my soul reacts to, to forgiveness they said it's all well and good to say forgive you find peace you find peace but you are a different soul like everybody else and each soul reacts differently to every situation and you have to honor thyself and you have to stand on your truth did Janae forgive the man who sexually abused her and enslaved her did she no she killed the motherfucker Okay. <laughs> yes, she did. Okay. So, um, then they said, well, then that's you. Okay. You can only forgive when you're standing on top of the mountain and you have obliterated all your enemies. And then you can say, okay, now I forgive you. Did Janae really forgive her sexual abuser? She she married his son, yes, and she fell in love with his son. But did she really forgive her sexual abuser? I have to read that story again because they they told they actually told me read the story again and learn. Did she or didn't she? I don't even know. I'm not sure that I even put that in the ending. But anyway, I was really hoping this wouldn't be too long. Okay, but anyway, um. It was in them using the stories they'd given me uh, in the form of our way of theology, our way of spirituality, our way of guiding you on how to live. First, you recognize your soul. Then you recognize the character that's in the book as you. If you don't recognize the characters, it ain't your story, it ain't your book. It ain't your story, it ain't your book. Simple. So anyway... Um, now I'm forgetting what I was saying. Anyway, it was because they were using the stories I had written that they had given me to rebuild me, as it were. I realized that I totally made a mistake. And especially after I read a whole lot of emails from, and thank you so much for the emails. Thank you so much for reaching out to me. And I wish you would do it all the time. I mean, really. There were a couple of emails that literally had me wanting to jump off the roof. Okay. <laughs> but they enlightened me and I thank those people for, for writing to me and for talking to me. There was this particular one and I really feel like I was so harsh on her and I really apologize to her. She, she was trying to get me to see myself in a different light and to change direction especially about the things i write she was saying to me 
basically you should be writing spiritual novels you should be writing novels that teach us how to live you should be writing that sort of thing and then i snapped at her and i didn't understand why then i did writing spiritual novels that tell you how to live you're just not getting it okay i literally am doing that with my ancestors every day we the bantu do not write our steve harvey kind of books because we know they are bullshit we know that a million different souls cannot be pegged into a box. That's why there are so many unclaimed Christians in the month of November. They are unclaimed because they couldn't live the true doctrine of Christianity. So they interpreted it the way they wanted to. And it was wrong. Right? So we don't do that as the Bantu. Through the tides of time for a thousand years, we have held ourselves together in stories stories about the rabbit stories about the elephant stories about that guy okay that guy who crossed a river full of crocodiles to get to a girl and what we had to learn from that was that there is nothing nothing a man won't do for the woman he loves there are lessons in every story that comes out of a Bantu writer. Every single story. There are lessons from the ancestors. Whether it is the river between Bangugi Wationgo in Kenya or the side chick by Isabel Mitten from Zimbabwe and South Africa, there is always a lesson to be learned. And we believe in critical thinking. We believe in being true to your soul and true to yourself. We believe that you read that story. You ask yourself, where do I fit in? Okay, who, who am I in this whole situation? If you can't find yourself, it's not your story. You keep looking until you find a story that resonates with your ass. Why does it resonate? Of all the stories my ancestors gave me, the trophy wife resonated more than anything. Why? Because I felt Janae's pain. Janae is a living, breathing girl. She's 15 years old right now, and she is in Atlanta. And I am way older. I'm 49, but I felt Janae. I said, this is a soul sister right here. You know, so anyway, I also realized that the mistake was mine. I just assumed that I was talking to Bantus and they understood that this is how we share our theology, our spirituality in stories, right? I forgot that. I totally forgot that. And I apologize for that. I, I truly do. And so when she came at me, she said, you should be telling us how to live. And I was like, I'm telling you how to live every day, huh? And you are ignoring me. Then I realized that the fault was mine. It was truly mine. Now, I may die a pauper. Yes, it has been predicted by some. I may die a pauper, but... I will never go against the Bantu doctrine of giving a soul freedom of choice, the right to be who you are, the right to stand in your own light, and the right to make decisions that will either take you to the peak, the left, or the right. I will never go against that doctrine by writing a steve harvey book that tells you how to deal with a man by the way all my african friends who bought that book and read it they all got divorced two years later <laughs> because they were trying to put some of that that stuff into practice and they were dealing with souls that were not about to have it right it's like how many women got married after reading steve harvey's book how many? How many millions of you guys got married? How many millions? Because the man made millions and millions of dollars. How many of you got married? Okay, after you read that book. Because it's impossible for us as the Bantu. I'm sure it's possible and it works for other cultures. And it's amazing and it's wonderful and it's all that. But we, the Bantu, completely believe in freedom of choice, the right to choose your own actions.
the right to take your own path, the right to be who you are. One lesson may not be for you, but another lesson may be exactly for you, like they did with me. They picked the trophy wife and we went through it as they were trying to rebuild me. They used the trophy wife, the story that they gave me, because they said, that's your soul. If anybody wants to know you, Isabel, they have to read that book because that's your soul. And in it, I, I learned things. I learned things that my soul will not accept and I learned things that my soul will accept. I learned things and I'm more comfortable now, you know, I've been rebuilt. And I am so sad that my fellow Bantus who are coming after me because when I was in the veil, we discovered that I had 178 curses. No joke. That'll be in book two. So most of those curses were done before I was even born because they were waiting for me. And then lots of them were done when I was between the ages of zero <laughs> and 23, right? Now a new breed has taken over. The children of the cursors have taken over and I have lots and lots of curses to the point that my cousin Taurai was claiming my writing abilities as his in the metaphysical and i discovered that which doctors i thought had left my life were still in my life okay still doing their shenanigans so i have been at war and i have been undoing curse after curse after curse after curse and this is how you undo a bantu curse you have to know exactly what that person said about you to the last period in exactly the same way they said it so basically my psychic ability is the one at work here i literally have to transport myself to stand behind someone who died a long time ago and hear the curse they were putting on a life that had not yet begun then i have to open the courts of the bantus and i have to counter that curse for those who have read a light in the cave you know what i'm talking about for those who haven't i'm not going to explain it because once i put something on paper it's on paper so you know I have to counter what they said. And some people, and some of these people have been long, long, long dead. Okay? And some are still alive and kicking like my cousin Tao, who is my greatest enemy. He took ownership of my writing skills, of my creativity. He said it was his. And he chanted that it was his. And that aided and abetted in me struggling in my writing. Right? So... I have to strengthen my psychic ability to no end. And I realized that doing these readings on a weekly basis and doing readings for other people has strengthened me so much, you guys, that I'm simply running through the curses. The only thing that's killing me is exhaustion. But I'm telling you, I know exactly what a motherfucker said. I know it because I have been doing this every week with you guys and I have been doing lots and lots and lots of private readings and I have gotten way stronger. So, you know, why kill a winning strategy? So that's why I'm back. I still have to save my life and I still have to save my son's life. I still have to protect and defend me and mine. And this is a winning strategy, working with you guys and doing these readings and, um, exercising my psychic ability is making me stronger and stronger and it's enabling me to to live the witch doctor who told me what he told me also told me something but i was no longer listening this was a two hour reading and i was recording it but i was hysterical by the time we got to what he, he said he said to me in the month of december you will be fighting for your life and I'm glad I only heard it at, towards the end of December because he was right about that. He was right about that. I have been fighting for my life. Because every time you confront a curse, your life is on the line. Every time you confront a curse, 
every time your life is on the line because at the end of every curse they asked for my death at the end of every curse they wanted me to die and i can't say it enough i can't say how important it is to live your own life to let your own light shine to work on yourself stealing from me in the metaphysical world um Insulting me in the physical world, calling me names, is not going to do anything for you. You need to concentrate on yourself, on your skills. You need to stand on your own self and your own confidence and you need to grow that light. Looking at someone else in a hateful, jealous manner, going after them like my relatives do with me, in a hateful and jealous manner, is not going to change their lives. But they are aware of it. And I believe everybody who does that is aware of it. Let your light shine. It's not just a, a crazy sentence. Let your light shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let your own light shine. Grow it. Nurture it. My cousin Taurai could have been a writer if he had nurtured the writing he claims to have had. But he didn't, though. And I did. I nurtured myself. Everything I have, I've worked hard for. My mother wants my ancestors because she wants to be like me. She wants to be famous in Africa, a famous psychic in Africa, and she wants people to come and bow to her. So she's trying to kill me for my ancestors. Mine, not hers. Mine. Okay, but can she really do what I do? No, she can't. But had she worked on herself, she might have let her own light shine and not looked greedily at her daughter. People do these things because they're insecure about themselves. They're unhappy with themselves. They always think you have it better, you have it easy. They always think that. So they come out and they insult you and they say lies about you and they try to take down your son. You've all been through that. There's, all, there's somebody who pretends they admire you, who pretends they love you, but actually they are there to take down your son because they think if they take down your son, they will shine. Not true. You can take down as many sons as you like if you don't work on yourself. If you do not work on yourself, your light is never going to shine. My friend said to me once, you know what we really hate about you, Isabel? And I said, what? And she said, you don't compete. No, I don't. I was born alone. The circumstances of my life and situation of my life completely different from everybody else's. I don't think any of you have ever eaten a rat. I did. I don't think any of you have ever eaten worms or lived in an African village where there's barely any food. I have. So my circumstances and my situations are unique to me. Why would I compete with anyone else? I compete with myself. If there's one thing that I'd like to share with the world, it's that. And having said that, having wasted so much time without even thanking your ancestors and without even thanking you because your ancestors did visit me in the veil. But I'm going to put that in the book because a lot was said and they are the reason why I'm sitting here today as well. Your ancestors, you guys rock. <laughs> you guys really, really rock. You rock. because, And I thank you for the love. I thank you for lighting the candles. I thank you for, you know, keeping me in your prayers because I was at the end. I'm making my way back up again. I was at the end. And I thank you so much for buying a light in the cave. And I say, please share it. Tell your friends about it. Please put me back on Amazon's best-selling list again. <laughs> okay. Please do so. Also, it helps because I have to wait for the cost of manufacturing a light in the cave to be paid off by the light in the cave for me to do book two. I'm going to call book two... 
either the girl with the axe or and then there was fire because i finally manifested the power of fire <laughs> okay so now i am going to go i'm sorry i took so long i am so sorry but i had so much to say i could have taken two hours for real as you can see there's no more music on my videos i've had to take that out because the copyright issues are really beginning to give me a headache and youtube has changed so much i don't blame youtube they are going with the laws of the land so i have taken out music altogether i hope to dance with you guys in person my friend has called my 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 trips to the united states to meet you guys the light in the cave tour <laughs> okay so i will no longer be playing music besides youtube being a problem i was also having a problem with the bantu musicians they don't want their music played outside the community they just want their music played within africa and within the community except for a few musicians right and i don't understand that and i i was tired of talking to africa because they were constantly taking down my videos then i would have to talk to them then they would say well it's the will of the artist it was exhausting it, it was painful it was getting painful because there's really nothing they can do because this artist just wants susan from across the street to hear his music he doesn't want uh the rest of the world to hear his music because it will be stolen blah 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 and and as my friend said waka waka the song sung by shakira was a bantu song and it 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 was used by a military a military in a, in a bantu country and um and it was stolen by Shakira and she made millions and millions of dollars out of it and they are still wailing that's our song you stole it whereas if they just let it out into the universe and the whole world had heard the song it would not have been so easily stolen right I ended up talking to an activist uh, a, a, an activist who's trying to get Bantu musicians to release their music to the world and he said my sister this is a long battle I've been at it for years and I continue to be at it it is the the Bantus we are very secretive and we don't give a fuck about making a million dollars we hold on to our principles no matter what these artists do not want to be heard by foreigners so um they will not be heard by foreigners. I just, I, I don't get that point. I totally don't get it. Okay. <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, you can't make music just for 200 people from across the street. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> but okay. Okay. To each their own. So I will no longer be playing uh, music on this channel. And it's going to totally break my heart. But anyway. <sighs> To Steve Harvey, I promise not to edit this shit. I promise not to edit this shit. I promise not to edit this shit because I'm so self-conscious about talking too much. But I promise not to edit this shit. And I will go straight into Steve Harvey. Okay. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing here. I haven't used these in a long time because, you know, when I get into the metaphysical, I'm using... I'm just using my my sixth sense without any tools, without any aids, right? I'm just using this right here, the third eye, because these tools are just for this earthly purpose. But when I'm in there, I'm just using the third eye. So this is going to be really fascinating. And I feel like a virgin right now. I feel like, oh. <laughs> that uh, my ancestors uploaded in my head this morning when I woke up was that they see that Steve Harvey and Marjorie are surrounded by a lot of jealous people. A lot of people in their community are very jealous of them. And that small community and its jealousy enables, it, no, the jealousy spreads, the jealousy spreads into, into uh, the whole world into the whole community of the world it begins with their friends people they know and it spreads and it spreads like a cancer and it grabs millions and millions of people so the animosity according to my ancestors the animosity um towards steve harvey and his wife marjorie is nothing but pure jealousy that's what they see pure human 
jealousy towards a couple that is loving each other, having a good time, and blah, blah, blah. So, I'm expecting very little out of this. This is practice run before I go into the really tough cookies. <laughs> Yes, there are really some tough cookies out there. I was battling with a, a metaphysical story about Chris Brown. Oh my God, I put it on Instagram for weeks on end. I mean, I'm busy trying to fight my curses and somebody, the metaphysical is, hey, 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 hey. You know, like, oh Lord. Anyway, I'm going to call Steve Harvey. And I'm going to call his wife, Marjorie, right? I got to check. Marjorie Harvey. I got to check. Sorry, people. Because I don't really pay attention to these people. Uh, I think it's Marjorie. I hope it's Marjorie. Because I'm wasting time. Marjorie Harvey. Marjorie Elaine Harvey. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So I am going to call Marjorie and Steve into the plate. And then I am going to concentrate on the two of them. And if we happen to see their children or whatever, perfect. If we don't, we don't. Because like I said, this is intended to be boring. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. So Steve is a flirt. Okay. I mean, he's a total flirt. He is a flirt. He he likes to make people laugh. He he really does. And he likes to flirt with females and everybody else in the room. He just walks into this plate. And he just performed a flirtatious act to me. He is a soul that is generally very happy. Like I told you, boring. <laughs> I'm not expecting any dark secrets here. <laughs> he is a soul that is generally happy. I sense a, an incredible amount of kindness in this man. An incredible amount of kindness. And he has been taken advantage of many, many, many times. He's had a lot of his work stolen too. A lot of his work. Yet he's very tenacious, very persistent. And he stays in the light. He's tried to help so many people. And um, some of them resent him for it. Okay, so I'm asking him to sit down because he's still, like, <laughs> flirting. So I'm asking him to sit down. And he sits down. He is very particular. This is a very particular man. This is a man who doesn't like to see something out of its place. Like, if you put a plate where it's not supposed to be, it's going to drive him crazy. If you throw towels on the ground, for instance, he's going to lose it. He is very particular, very detail-oriented, very just so. It drives people crazy. A clean white shirt is his favorite attire, but he's saying he hardly ever gets to wear it. He says, I've had problems with women. Now no more. He just said that. Yes, he's an entertainer born to be an entertainer his soul is that of an entertainer and he is in his lane and he just said for the most part he has been happy in his chosen career he said you gotta forget the bumps on the road you gotta forget them you gotta push them aside otherwise they make you evil you turn to drink you lose control and you lose everything Okay, so now I'm going to call in his wife. 
beautiful wife, my girl. My girl. My girl. And she is the exact opposite of her husband. She's very stiff. She's very uptight. She holds herself real close. She's very, very secretive. She has her secrets. And you're all going to be amazed. She doesn't like to be in the limelight. And that almost made her drop Steve when he was asking her out. He says, this is the most difficult woman I ever had to get. <laughs> Meaning he really chased her down and he really, really wanted her. She is extremely private. People think they know this woman. They don't know this woman. She keeps everything close to her chest. She's gone through a lot of pain. She's extremely insecure. A lot of pain, a lot of trauma. And she's extremely insecure. There was physical abuse in her past. A great deal of it. Because she's showing me a black eye. And she survived it. She's now in a place where she's more peaceful. She doesn't trust her husband. But she has issues trusting anybody. Not even her kids. That she trusts. She is... um. You know, like, if you go boom and you go, oh! <laughs> okay. I hope I got it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, boo. Ooh! She is the type. She will jump. Ooh! You know, she will jump. She is far from strong, but she is strong. You know, it's, it's hard to explain. She's vulnerable. Vulnerable is the word, but strong. However, given a choice, to lean on someone or not lean on someone for strength, she will lean on someone. So Steve works very well for her. Very well for her because he likes women who lean on him. And she is a leaner. They work very well. While they're in this plate, they are working very well. I don't know what's going to happen when I drop these shells, which is what I'm about to do, okay? They work very well together. And I can see the envy. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> this is not what I wanted to see. <laughs> okay, there are changes in this relationship. Changes are coming and they are coming quick. They are coming quick, people. And like I said, while they were in the plate, great relationship. But as soon as I took them out and I put them on the board, different story. What, bas what that means basically is that these two should be able to work together and create a really happy relationship. But these two are not... They're not even walking down the same path. Okay, so this is Steve right here. Okay, and he is looking at his wife right here. This is all Steve Harvey's life. When you take all these shells together, I don't know if you can see them all or not, but they make a really nice triangle. A really nice triangle. This is all Steve Harvey's life. And it's the triangle is telling me that this man made some mucho money in his past. So much money that he doesn't even need to be working right now. He worked hard. He got the greatest success ever. Okay. And now what he's just doing is just to keep himself busy. Just to entertain himself. He doesn't need a check no more. He hasn't been needing a check for a very long time. He hasn't. He has achieved his destiny. What he was meant to be and who he was meant to be and where he was meant to be, he has achieved it. All right. So this side is all Marjorie. Okay. And this side is Steve 
before Marjorie, the, the, the life he has with his kids. I don't know how many kids he says he has by himself, okay? I don't know. But I have to tell you guys that with men, I'm always right about the number of kids that they have because men are sometimes given children that are not theirs, okay? <laughs> and when they are not theirs, it doesn't turn up on the board. With women, it's a very scary business, right? But he could have more kids than what is on the board because I am being shown uh, the number of children in his past, right? The number of children he had while he was working for his success in his past. He could have more now, but he had four kids. He claimed three out loud and proud. He did not claim one. So there is... This particular child, he's trying to make amends with this particular child. He's trying to bring this child into the fold. It's a female. It's a, it's a girl. He's trying to bring her into the fold. Right now, um, his kids... His biological kids are very important to him. He's trying to set things right. He's trying to make sure that they are set up. And this particular one, in whose life he wasn't in, is giving him a hard time. Okay. Give him a hard time. Now, uh, but he's working at it, right? I'm really running away from the fact that although he has his entire attention on his wife, he does not love her. He sees her as property, property he owns. And the feeling is mutual. Marjorie really doesn't love anyone. <laughs> I didn't want to say that <laughs> but oh my god the one thing i do do so well and my ancestors did say that to me they said we love your laugh when we tell you something and you burst out laughing there's embarrassment there is la there is fun there is this but we love your laugh and it would be a shame if you stopped laughing and this is my first real laugh because of the things that they because of the way they upload anyway the thing is marjorie doesn't love anybody okay My grandmother from repeating that because she will repeat what shocks her right she doesn't love herself either she's not at all self-involved as people think she's not she doesn't love herself either she has some really good friends who really love her and her children too they love her but there's a distance she has a distance with everyone she loves. This is Marjorie's story. This is what she's telling me from the shells that are here, okay? This is what she's telling me. In the beginning, her marriage to Steve Harvey was everything she wanted right here. Everything. She was in love with him. He was good to her babies, okay? Really good to her babies. And she was in love with this man. She was so in love with him. Yeah. Okay, she was so in love with him. It was ridiculous. And she was at her happiest. We call that the honeymoon phase. She was at her happiest. The honeymoon phase was amazing, right? And with time, the love has died. And she's also telling me something very interesting. Mm. Now that I didn't expect, okay. Steve doesn't 
lavish her with gifts the way people think. Boom. Do you know? Okay, let me stop talking. Let me give you one. <laughs> this happens a lot to women who marry rich men. I think I did it. Kenya. Kenya's video. Yes. Kenya. Yeah. And of course, I think I told you all the horror stories in Africa. And they wake me up every day because I lived it, you know, by watching. And anyway, he doesn't lavish her with gifts. At the beginning of their relationship, he did, right? He did what was, you know, he did, but he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't lavish her with gifts. He keeps her penniless, literally. Yeah. And his money goes to his biological children. He spoils his biological children. So no matter what we think and what we believe we see, the shells are saying otherwise. The shells are saying this man, Steve Harvey, spoils his biological children. They are getting daddy's money. They are getting daddy's stuff. They are getting daddy's shit. And he doesn't spoil his wife. Why? Oh, he says she can do for herself. He says she can do for herself and she's doing for herself. He says she's, uh, she can do for herself. She does for herself. She spoils her children. I ain't for that. You got to work hard for what you want. She spoils her kids. I spoil my kids. Equal. There is a resentment in Steve Harvey towards Marjorie's kids, okay? <laughs> I am so shocked. He believes that one kid is bringing the family into disrepute and ruining his name. He regrets giving that kid his name. He says she's so stupid, she's as dumb as two planks. And she's ruining my legacy. Her behavior is, is uncalled for. This is a man who really watches his speech, his diction. I like it. Yeah, I do. He, he says her behavior is uncalled for. He says, my blood Harveys are not like that. My blood Harveys know that to keep my legacy, they have to keep a low profile. You know, so he has a really tight relationship with his kids and it's only going to get stronger. He says, I raised mine right. Right. And he says, she's bringing us into ill repute with her silly decisions, her stupid decisions. And my name is up all in the tabloids. And she is blaming me for being famous. She is blaming me for her wayward daughter. Hmm. Okay. Any guesses that that daughter is Laurie? I don't know the other one. But he is very unhappy. He says, I have to manage her. I have to manage it. There are worse things that can come out there. Worse things. She does horrible things that, that can ruin a man's name. And I have to manage her. And she says, I'm too controlling. I should leave her, her children alone because she doesn't interfere with mine. Now let's go to Ms. Marjorie. Marjorie looks at Steve's children, his biological children, as competition. Marjorie is saying what he doesn't tell you is that he also takes care of their mothers. He has this thing that his relationship with his kids can only be strengthened by him making sure that their mothers are okay. You know... I like this. I mean... I like it. So I, I have to applaud. I have to, he's right. You can't love a child and dismiss the mother. 
when you're a man. You can't. You can't. You have to make sure the mother is right for you to have a great relationship with the child. So, yes. I like his wisdom. Anyway, she, she resents that. She feels like she's getting nothing and she can't give him a child and those who have children with him are getting more. So I'm asking her, is it about the money, Marjorie? Is it about the money? I really expected it to say no. <laughs> I'm a sucker for love. I've never, fe I've never had love, so I guess I'm a sucker for love. I really expected her to say no. And she said yes. It is about money to a certain extent. I want to set up my children as well. I want to to be safe after he is gone. I can't be sure that I'll be safe after he is gone. I can't be sure that I won't be poor after he is gone. Well, the good thing is, they really work on this marriage, but, This is a triangle, people. And those who've been with me for a long time, you know this shit. They work on this marriage, but there is a third party. Who do you belong to? Marjorie. Marjorie, this person here, this human being who is so in love with Marjorie belongs to Marjorie. So Marjorie is keeping herself entertained. She's keeping herself very entertained with someone who really, really loves her. Um, an actor of some kind. He's an actor. He's younger. Definite actor. And so she's keeping herself kind of busy. Right? Because there is a triangle. Okay. Is this a happily ever after relationship? Steve and Marjorie. Are you going to stay married forever? Steve and Marjorie. Are you going to stay married forever? Steve and Marjorie. Are you going to stay married forever? Yes, here. They're in it for the long run. There is really a depth of love between them. You know, there is, they do love each other. So they're just going through some things that everybody goes through. They are restructuring their marriage, as it were. But they do love each other very much. And they, they are committed. They, they, they intend to, to stay together. And, and Steve Harvey says, hell yeah, I'm too old. <laughs> he says, I'm too old to even think otherwise. I'm just too old, man. I'm too old. I just want, you know, hell yeah. I love my wife. As much as a, as a human being can love a person, you have differences with. Okay. So anyway, um... What else can I ask them? Because I really don't want to do Lori. Lori gets on my nerves. Um, well, I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there because I said I was going to start slowly, 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 slowly. And I think that's it. And I'm sure I've gone past one hour, 30 minutes. And, um, well, I, I... Before I leave, I want to thank everybody who booked a reading with me. Your faith in me was just so amazing. How did you know that I'll be back on the seat? I'm back on the seat right now, and on Wednesday, I will be doing your readings. I want to thank you so much for the confidence and for the love. I can't thank you guys enough. I, you guys took care of me in the video. And um, 
that well you took care of me i want to urge you all to continue buying a light in the cave because like i said it has to pay for itself for me to be able to write book two it must at least pay for itself and thank you so much for the reviews please don't forget to leave reviews on amazon please don't forget to leave reviews on amazon.com and um I also want to tell people I'm open for business because I really need to do a lot of readings, okay? <laughs> because I need to strengthen that muscle because I've got a hundred and something curses to undo in the veil. But most of all, I'm just glad to be back. I'm really glad to be back and I'm really glad I laughed and I really thank your ancestors for making me come back, for insisting I come back. And I want to thank my ancestors for being strong and for standing with me. And I want to thank the South African Traditional Healers Association for being there every single day and for sending me witch doctors with similar stories who shared their stories and for telling me that I should cut all ties with my biological family because witch doctors like me when they can't get us in the metaphysical they will send someone to kill us and i want the south african traditional healers association to understand that i have heard them and i will follow through and i want to thank kichi oh my god kichi you are something else and um you always say my ancestors found you and you are so right there was a time I was so hysterical, I wouldn't hear what my ancestors were saying to me. I just shut them out. I was going, la, 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 la. And they said, okay, call Kichi. We'll talk through her. And Kichi held my hand in the metaphysical. Kichi said to me, you know, Isabel, I never used to believe in ancestors until I met yours. <laughs> And I want to thank her for, I can, I cannot thank her enough. And most of all, I want to thank you again for the love that you gave me. You don't understand. Real love translates in the metaphysical. True love translates in the metaphysical. And this is the first time I've gone into the veil and I've been held up by a lot of love. The first time in my entire life. And I'm going to leave you all with a great Irish saying, which is very precious to me and my heart, and which I have been saying to myself since I left the veil, and I am going to be sharing it with you. Okay. In 2020 and forever, may the roads rise up to meet you. The wind, may the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And may God hold you in the palm of his hand. See you next year. Happy New Year, everybody. Oh, no song to even end this. No song to even end this. And I'm now looking like, where is it? <laughs>